Hey guys, uh, I've got great news. I've been given the clear uh, to start squatting and deadlifting again. Very light, very light. But I realized I had never put together a video to show you guys what I've done every single day for my rehab over the past uh, six months. So it's been six months since I've been squatting and deadlifting. I've just started again. But I thought instead of just showing you that point, uh, let's show you everything I did to get there. So I'm gonna take you through what I did every single day as my daily rehab routine. Um, now part of it is a little bit misnomer because uh, some of these things I would do multiple times a day, but my rehab was over an hour every single day, my rehab work. So we're gonna start with um, a short walk. I do, multiple sh I do multiple short walks per day of 10 minutes, usually two to three, followed by the McGill Big Three as prescribed by Stu McGill and Brian Carroll. And, uh, and then I do uh, a few different exercises in the gym, and I'm gonna show you guys those. So uh, I'm really excited. Thank you to Brian Carroll and uh, Stu McGill for helping me get here. Now uh, Andres is uh, stepping in now that I'm kind of healed, and uh, we're gonna start programming again and get me back to that platform. So you guys come, watch again. This is just programming for my specific injury. I had a bulging disc in my lower back between L4 and L5. It doesn't mean it will help you, but if you have, in general, um, some lower back instability or, or disc herniations or bulges, some of these things may be useful for you guys, but you should consult uh, a professional like Stu McGill um, if you have any questions. So come with me and we're going to walk you through. A lot of times I'll do these walks. Um, typically what I do is I get up, move around for a little bit, and once I feel kind of loosened up, uh, I'll go outside and do a quick 10 minute walk and uh, then I'll do the McGill Big 3 after that and then later when I go to the gym in the afternoon typically I'll do another walk and uh, the McGill Big 3 again which I'm going to show you guys those but basically this walk is supposed to be brisk with free swinging of your arms and as McGill explained to me this kind of creates a little bit of a pumping action on the disc and provides a little bit of traction. He said even just doing two to three 10 minute walks a day um, is, is great for back health for a lot of people. So this is something I put in and uh, it's interesting how much I saw my caloric expenditure go off. I mean, we know this, that walking, you know, that you increase some, some expenditure, but I've been able to eat a lot more doing this, um, which is probably falls under some people put the duh category. But I never really thought walking briskly uh, would allow me to eat hundreds of calories more. So that's been a nice side benefit because uh, I love to eat. Um, but usually if my back starts to flare up, if I just do uh, one of these 10 minute walks, um, I usually feel better afterwards. Um, just gets the area warmed up and um, it's probably something I'll keep in uh, for the rest of my lifting career. Maybe not 10 minutes, but definitely five, you know, even before heavy squat sessions to get um, get myself warmed up and, and feel nice. So, like I said, I just use this kind of a meditation time and swing my arms freely. Try to keep it nice and brisk right now. I've got the speed at 4.3 miles an hour. And uh, yeah, these really seem like they've made a pretty good difference for me. All right, so the one minute walk is done. Nice and warmed up. Now we're gonna do the McGill Big Three. And uh, we're gonna do bird dogs, we're gonna do McGill curl ups, and we're gonna do side planks. And when I met with McGill, it turns out I was doing all three of these wrong. <laughs> uh, but the first thing we're gonna start with is bird dogs. And bird dogs are where you extend, you're on all fours, and then you extend your opposite arm and leg. And the major points here are, you wanna try and keep your back as straight and rigid as possible not have your lumbar move or as little movement as possible. And you're kind of, as you're doing your bird dogs, you're staying tight. You're engaging your lats, you're engaging your core, you're engaging your glutes. And when you push out your arm and leg, you're trying to kind of sweep them against the floor. And then just staying really, really tight, making a fist and uh, really focusing on that core tightness. And we do um, six reps per side. Uh, 10 seconds each rep and then we do then we do four reps and then two reps so we do uh, McGill calls them kind of uh, descending sets so let's get after it 
you want to make sure your knees are wide enough at your base. Otherwise, if they're too close together, it's not going to be difficult. Um, you want to make sure you, you push yourself away, make yourself tall, and then um, just make sure you're staying tight. That's such a huge thing. When I did these, I thought they were way too easy. It's because I was not getting tight enough. Now I break a sweat after a few of these. And you don't point your toe. You keep your toe uh, trying to point it that way. And as I understand it, this is a very uh, good anti-rotational exercise. I'm also engaging my lats right now. All right, so the next exercise after bird dogs is McGill curl ups. These are gonna look like I'm not hardly doing anything, but they're actually, if you do them right and get really tight, they're actually pretty difficult. And so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna lay down flat on my back. I'm gonna put one leg out. My hands are gonna go under my lower back to support me. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna take a deep breath in. And I'm trying to, I'm gonna take a deep breath in. Get my abdominals tight and raise my elbows off the ground and just take my head slightly off the ground almost basically letting my head hover above the ground. I'm going to do that for 10 seconds, for 6 total reps, then 4 total reps, then 3 total reps. Now, this probably seems pretty easy, like I'm not doing much, but you really want to focus on trying to get tight, like somebody's trying to poke you here and you're trying to resist their fingers. So when you get tight, not just tight here, all the way around. So those are the McGill curl up. Some people might ask, well that doesn't seem like you're doing a whole lot. Why aren't you coming all the way up like you would a sit up? And uh, McGill actually showed in his lab, he has a, a spine model, shows that the action of a sit up is the exact action, action that will create a, a lumbar disc herniation after thousands of repetitions. So uh, yeah, we don't do those. <laughs> uh, McGill is actually a, very much against sit ups for abdominal health. Uh, and it makes a little bit of sense when you think about the purpose of the abdominals really is not so much to move so much as it is to stop movement. So stopping that movement with the abdominals stabilizes your spine. So now we've focused on kind of the, the back and front of our core and now we're going to do side planks to focus on the side. To get into a position of side plank, the biggest things here are making sure you're activating your obliques and transverse abdominis. And you're going to have your feet kind of together. I put my lead foot out front here, and then my foot, that's, my leg that's close to the ground, I put it behind. And you're going, to, you're going to go up into a side plank, and you really want to think about driving your elbow through the floor to get more activation here. You can put your hand here or here. I prefer here. I just feel more stable this way. Um, and try to make sure that this arm is at a 90 degree angle, and you're not like here or here, you want to be pretty much driving straight into the ground. And we do uh, 10 seconds each side, four times. And we want to be, like I said, athletic, so when we switch sides, notice how I stay tight and try to minimize any movement of my spine. So now we're going to do uh, suitcase carries uh, each side four times for 50 yards and that is holding one dumbbell at your side and walking and what you're trying to do is to avoid doing this where you're kind of getting compensating by being further on one side. We want to try and straight, stay as straight up and down as we can. You're always going to have a little bit of lean one side or the other um, but using your core to stabilize you. So we're going to grab a 50, go out to the parking lot and start walking. Let's go. So 
now we're gonna do what's called a bottoms up carry. Uh, you would usually do these with kettlebells with the handle uh, facing down in your hand and the heavy part up. So you kind of turn them up and it's a lot of stabilization. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have those here at Powerhouse. Um, they have them in LA Fitness, but LA Fitness is weak and they won't let us film. So we're gonna film here, but we're just gonna modify by taking the dumbbell, turning it upside down. So same thing for uh, each side for 50 yards. So let's walk it out. So the last exercise we're doing is called stir the pot. Use a, some kind of uh, exercise ball. Um, you don't want it too deflated because otherwise it's going to make it really difficult, um, which can be good, but it also can be a little bit dangerous. You want, this is a pretty good inflation level. It's firm, but not too firm. And you're going to put your elbows on it, and you're literally going to make circles and stir the pot. Um, and you're going to use that to, to basically use your core to brace. So uh, currently I'm actually up to 100 repetitions. So I do 50 concentric and uh, 50, uh, sorry, 50 clockwise, 50 counterclockwise. Uh, but for my rehab, uh, before, for the first uh, several months I was only doing 50 reps, so I'll show you guys 50. So I'm going to do 25 and 25. And the biggest thing is trying to limit, limit your spinal movement. So I'm thinking about putting the, the stress on my abdominals and using my elbows. There it is. Some mistakes a lot of people make is they um, they'll use too much of their tricep. They'll kind of be on their wrists and they'll be using their tricep and their triceps fatigue really quickly. So you want it to mostly be here, lats, and uh, yeah, if you're, you're using your elbows mostly, you're using your lats and core. So that's it for my daily rehab that I did for several, many, many months. It was very boring, it was very monotonous. I actually hated it, um, but that is what it will require to get back to meat shape uh, and be healthy. So that is what we're gonna do.